Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching Video Voters Guide. We're here today with Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Andy Saltz, running for state representative for District 33. Welcome, Andy. Thanks so much for having me. Very welcome. Glad you could be here. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get going. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. It's a crowded field. And uh, why are you running for this office? Well, thanks so much for making the time. And before I start, I just hope that everyone is staying safe and healthy out there. My name is Andy Saltz. I'm running uh, for the state legislature in House District 33, which is in Northwest Portland and unincorporated Washington County in the Democratic primary. Uh, my partner and I both grew up in this district. And we started dating when we were 16 years old at Sunset High School and are raising our two boys in the community that we grew up in. I'm an educator, an advocate, and a father of two toddlers. I'm running to bring our state together because I'm really worried about our political system pulling us apart through partisanship, through our urban-rural divide, and we have a lot of challenges in front of us, and I'm really excited to work through those challenges. I'm currently a professor of education policy and director of the PhD program in education and leadership at Pacific University. Previously, I've served on a school board and I'm the only candidate in this race to have served in elected office before. When I was on the school board in Michigan, when my partner was going to graduate school, it was during the Great Recession and I learned an incredible amount about public service, about budgeting, and about humility. Those are going to be really important components in our next state legislature. I've also served in the, in the Michigan State Senate Fiscal Agency and teach quantitative methods in our doctoral program. I'm a, I'm a data nerd and budget wonk. And I think that budgeting is gonna be really important moving forward. Thank I'm you. Oh, I'm sorry, just one final thing. I'm running to uh, rebuild our economy after this crisis to address our homelessness crisis, improve public education, and address climate change. Thank you. I was just gonna ask, you know, with respect to the pandemic and the effective and efficient administration of our state, how do you propose to meet the challenges that the pandemic has provided for us? Yeah, a couple of challenges uh, in the short term and then looking forward to uh, the next year or so and, and what I might be able to contribute to the legislature. Um, I've heard a lot of stories about individuals who have struggled to get their unemployment benefits. Our uh, state agencies have not been able to keep up with the demand. And so I think in the short term, we have to make sure that people get taken care of uh, both economically and health wise uh, throughout this crisis. I think the crisis has also heightened um, our challenges around houselessness and housing insecure individuals in our community and those folks are our most vulnerable and so I see that as a moral crisis that we have to come together to solve. And lastly, as I previously alluded to, the economic impact of this is going to be tremendous. I, I read one report that estimates 250,000 jobs lost in Oregon by July. And so we have to do everything we can to rebuild our economy. I'm really proud to have the Beaverton Chamber of Commerce and a number of other business folks behind me uh, who have confidence in me to help rebuild our economy. Thank you. Uh, a question about redistricting. Traditionally, the legislature has conducted the decennial redistricting process, which will be in 2021. Are you comfortable with the current redistricting process? And if not, how would you seek to change it? I really appreciate this question. And honestly, the League of Women Voters has done some really good work on this. Through Thank our you. research, um, I, I'm not happy with Oregon's process. I, I do not think that should be controlled in the legislature. I really feel like both Washington and California have better models, uh, specifically California with a nonpartisan uh, group that can take a look at this. I, I feel like redistricting should be removed from partisanship uh, and that too often times gerrymandering takes place in these processes. So I would advocate for a nonpartisan commission. Uh, I would remove myself from uh, redistricting conversations uh, and, and really try to uh, mirror some of the stuff going on in California. Thank you. What are your thoughts on cap and trade proposals intended to mitigate climate change? Are they a good idea or not, and why? 
Sure. Well, a lot of this campaign is really about building the future for the next generation. I like to tell people the ultimate measure of a community is if people want to move back and raise their families there. And my partner and I decided to do that because we had safe neighborhoods and excellent schools, a wonderful park system. I'm really worried about the future of our state because I don't think we're doing enough to create sustainable environment. Um, I support cap and trade legislation. I worry at times, especially this short session, a lot of compromises were inserted into that bill, so it became really difficult to understand. In fact, there were only two legislators who really felt like they understood in depth that I talked to about all of uh, the changes that happened with that legislation. So I think we have to simplify the process, but I absolutely support uh, environmental measures to create a more sustainable economy. Thank you. What is your view of the suggestion that the legislature suspend collecting the taxes to fund the 2019 Student Success Act? So I was a part of the efforts to pass the Student Success Act, and I'm really proud that our state came together and created a coalition to better fund our schools. Um, even with that additional revenue, we have not met the quality education model or QEM. Um, that says this is uh, an adequate funding for our schools. So um, from my perspective, I would not want to delay in the cat tax. What I would want is expanding uh, labor deductions, potentially looking at the payroll tax. A lot of our businesses, like individuals, are struggling with liquidity. And so I think from a government perspective, we have to do everything we can to help those small businesses in particular meet their payrolls. Thank you. We have about one more minute. Is there anything else you want to bring up? Yeah, I, I, I would like to revisit uh, the, the COVID pandemic. And, and I think one of the things that it highlights is some of the challenges in our healthcare system. Um, people are not only losing their jobs, but they're losing their health insurance. And I cannot imagine the stress uh, that folks are under to navigate both of those things simultaneously. So I think we need to build a system where folks have confidence that they will be supported and have health care even if they lose their jobs. And that's currently not the situation. So I think we have a lot of work to do on access and affordability in our health care system as well. Um, the last thing I would just say is um, House District 33 is a really unique place. It's wonderful. It includes the Pearl District and Bethany and Cedar Mill. These are areas that are growing really quickly. And my historical knowledge of the district and how those changes have occurred will really help me navigate the challenges moving forward. Thank you. It's uh, been a pleasure talking with you. And now I'm going to do my close. This has been Video Voters Guide and thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures an excellent resource is www.vote411.org. Thank you again, and thank you, Andy.